Ukrainian forces in the recapture of the city of Liman marks a very significant gain since their counteroffensive just last month. So what does today's victory mean for the rest of the war? Let's bring in Zena military analyst Colonel Cedric Layton joining us now right there at the magic wall. All right, so Colonel, how does Ukraine's recapture of Liman advance their position on the larger battlefields? Well, Pamela, this is going to be one of the biggest issues for the Ukrainians to actually deal with. And this is really important because Liman is right here. It is right on the cusp of the uh, borders between the different regions that you have here, the Luhansk region, the Donetsk region. These are both part of the Donbass region. And that very fact makes this a key point. And as Secretary of Defense Austin was mentioning, this is a key strategic area because it is a transportation hub. And the fact that it's a transportation hub right through this, this area means that it is very critical for Russian resupply efforts down in these areas right here, as well as for the Ukrainians. So the fact that the Ukrainians have now captured Liman is really the biggest thing uh, that they have going for them in the Northeast, and that may be very, very much a, of a game changer. And according to a CNN analysis of exclusive data from the Institute for the Study of War, seven months into this invasion, Russia controls less territory than it did in the initial days of the war. I mean, that's pretty incredible. What does that tell you? Well, that is really significant because it shows, Pamela, that there is so much that the Russians have done that has really come to naught, that has been for nothing. Uh, the Russians had controlled areas uh, all the way through here, uh, this, this area right in through here, of course, all of this. Uh, they would controlled all of these different areas. And the very fact that the map looks like this today with Ukrainian control here, the, uh, earlier in the war, the Ukrainians uh, went north of Kyiv, which is right here, and recaptured all of these areas. And the fact that they are making some progress in the south means that the Ukrainians are really making a lot of headway in this area. And uh, they've got momentum on their side. And that is a really big thing when it comes to warfare. And in this war, momentum is everything. It is. We've been saying that from the beginning, and Ukrainians have had that on their side since the get-go. We're seeing it play out on the battlefield. What are the next moves you're watching for as the fighting continues? So I think one of the big things to look at is the overall strategy that we uh, are faced with from each of the different players here. So let's start with the Russians over here uh, on, the, on the left. Um, we expect them potentially, if they can make this happen, to do counterattacks, to conduct counterattacks in the northeastern part of the country of Ukraine, the east and the south. Now, that's one thing that they may want to do, but whether or not they've got the wherewithal to do it remains a completely different question, and their ability to do this is very much called into question. They may also replace military leaders. This is a favorite thing that people like Putin would do because at this particular point in time, the leaders aren't working out for him. And then finally, uh, the idea of moving tactical nuclear weapons, like we mentioned in our Let's Report, that's a really big thing because if those are moved within the range of Ukrainian or NATO targets, that becomes a really big deal and that could change the very nature of the war. So that's on the Russian side. For the Ukrainians, I expect them to consolidate gains around Liman and moving into the Luhansk region, which is right next to it. They could also move toward Kherson in the south. And if they use weapons like the ATACM system, the Army Tactical Missile System, and eventually get fighter aircraft, that could also be a game changer in the war. Then finally, for the NATO folks, I expect them to re, uh, ramp up their resupply efforts, counter hybrid war moves such as we saw with the pipeline attacks, which are probably attributable to the Russian sabotage efforts. And then finally, uh, because Ukraine has just applied for fast track NATO membership, I expect them to put that application on hold, but consider it after hostilities have ebbed a bit and the Ukrainians have regained a lot more territory.